Referee Tony Weeks. Who has gotten the lion's share of big fight assignments here in Las Vegas in recent years. Did not handle the super fight last Saturday night, but is here to be in charge of Lomachenko against Walters. By the way, Walters has a draw, a blemish on his record. It wasn't really a draw. It was a terrible judge's decision in a fight clearly won by Walters. Lomachenko has a loss on his record, but there's a story behind that too, as he insisted on fighting for a world title in only his second professional fight and wound up in a matchup against the craftiest rule bender in the sport, Orlando Salido, and wound up losing an extremely close decision that a lot of people disputed. So both blemishes on the two records are questionable. And that's what you'd expect from fighters of this level of skill and this level of preparation. Lomachenko always wants to fight the best in his weight class, whoever that is, he doesn't care. Has, has told his representatives, his manager, his promoter, I want to fight the other belt holders. Barring that, give me the number one contender. He's not available number two, number three. Walters is the best available opponent who we're getting with Lomachenko, and he's a top flight fighter in and around this weight division. Southpaw against conventional fighter. First round is often a, quote, feeling out round. Lomachenko has been pushing his jab out there, checking the distance between himself and Walters. Walters throwing a jab out there as well. Neither man has landed one of their more significant punches quite yet. Nicholas Walker, Walters is taking his time with his jab, trying to find a, uh, an opening for that big right hand. Uh, Lomachenko being very smart, taking his time, trying to figure out the length, the distance. One thing I, like, I have to say right away, though, is that Nicholas Walters, for any fighter that's been off for 300-plus days, does not show any ring rust at all. 343 days since his last fight, and a lot of that delay was brought about by his determination to get the best deal he could possibly get for this fight against Lomachenko. He knew he was going to fight him. He wanted to get paid. Nicholas Walters is a linear fighter, very forward-backwards. And um, Lomachenko is a fighter that fights in semicircles at angles and is the faster fighter and is a southpaw and is better defensively. Walters, the bigger puncher, needs to lay traps to catch Lomachenko on the way in, I think, in order to land a big punch. And Lomachenko just landed a pretty good left hand on Walters. If he does that again, it's going to get bad for him. That was a good right hook by Lomachenko. Lomachenko has begun to found the range. Ah! Walters has done so, so in the last minute of round one, it was Lomachenko who began to establish his offense against Nicholas Walters. He's ready. He's ready for your punch. Fake the first attack, and then the second one is for real. Otherwise, keep your hands in their place. Keep going forward. Fill them out with the hand and then go forward. Round two begins. Vasily Lomachenko of Ukraine against Nicholas Walters of Jamaica. Best fight of the year in the 130 pound weight class. So at the end of the last round, Lomachenko's um, superior ability start to shine through. As I said, Walters has fight-changing power, but I don't know if he can just go out and create that offense on Lomachenko. I think he's going to have to catch Lomachenko with something on the way in. That would be his best out. Walters has fight-changing power. Lomachenko has fight-controlling craft. <laughs> Now Lomachenko has begun to pepper Walters with tight, short punches. 
Jab, quick left hands. Getting just close enough to land. Still making himself scarce when Walters tries to throw back. As good as Walters is, and he's not a guy that fighters around this weight division are rushing into the ring with. Um, Lomachenko, big favorite. Yeah, he's Five great. and six to one in this fight, and that speaks to, you know, boxing insider's knowledge of his ability. Yeah, he's staying very close to the X-Man to try to neutralize that straight right hand. Doing a very good job of staying close. Sooner or later, though, oh. that was a good right hand. Oh, yes, it was. Sooner or later, if he lets Lomachenko continue to weave out to his left, He's gonna bring a right hook from over there that's not gonna be pretty. Who's he, Roy? Ah, uh, Nicholas Walters. Walter, talking about Walters. Like right there. So he baited him into that shot. He saw it the first time, but he didn't take it. But since it was there, he came right behind it and followed and landed the straight left hand. That's what we call him high tech. Low and Chico, that is. Good jab by Nichols Walters. Another good jab. Gets by in him. another good jab. So Walters has begun to find the range now. Just with the jab. Lomachenko hasn't, hasn't landed a big right hand yet. Yeah, Lomachenko that doesn't mind the jab. He just doesn't want him to find the range with the straight right. Or the right uppercut. Good left hand again by Lomachenko. Another good left hand by Lomachenko. He's just out quicking Walters at this point. He's able to make quicker movements. He's more decisive about where he wants to go and when he wants to go there. He's getting the spots before Walters can deal with him. Getting outside of that right hand by stepping to his left, I mean stepping to his right, which is away from Walters' right. December 10, Terrence Crawford, the pride of Omaha and universally recognized as the best 140-pound fighter in the world, takes on big-punching John Molina in front of his hometown fans. One week later, triple-header action from the Los Angeles Forum featuring the final ring appearance of 51-year-old legend Bernard Hopkins. At least, he says so. Hopkins will be taking on Joe Smith, who in his last fight knocked out the highly regarded Andre Fonfara in the first round. So we know that Smith has punching power, and we know that Hopkins is a great bomb diffuser. Chenko, as you watch him work, generally fighters as physically gifted as he is, don't attain his kind of technical craft, as you would say, Jim. Don't, don't, and in addition don't, to that, don't, don't, he can crack, hands free. and he's a southpaw, and he's really good defensively. He is the total package. And Nicholas Walters would be smart to try to land that straight right hand to the body side. Good stop, quick stop, left stop, hand stop, inside stop, stop. by Lomachenko. Don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. Here and they go. don't acquire the Lomachenko level craft usually because they don't have to. But Lomachenko has the skills of a guy who's not as talented as he is, but, but he is supremely talented. And when Lo Lomachenko's going low to his outside, which is his right, and Nicholas Walters is staying straight up there in front of him, sooner or later that's going to be real dangerous for him. For Walters? Yes, because Lomachenko sees the right hook and he sees the left hand. I don't think I don't think Nicholas Walters realizes that he's in harm's way. Like right there, that move he's making, he's constantly making him get used to seeing it, but not throwing it off of it. Eventually, he's going to do it one time, and it'll be a smashing hook that'll come from it. Walters has landed some uppercuts. That one was low in this fight when Lomachenko's jumping in a little. Walter's getting a little impatient, it seems, too. And not focusing much on Lomachenko's body. As again, that was a good shot. Just as you said to Jim, you must have woke the idea up from him. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that to have any chance against Vasily Lomachenko, 
You might want to focus on the body for the first stages of the fight. It's not up something for later on. I agree with you 100%. So in this round, Walter finally throws body shots. Still missing with the right hand upstairs. Lomachenko, we see that great footwork. Constantly able to move side to side and step around Nicholas Walters. He's a step around fighter of the highest order. Yeah, the other thing about Lomachenko, I mentioned that level of athletic ability combined with that little level of craft, but he applies the craft aggressively, particularly and, and in a busy style, particularly for a good defensive fighter. Makes guys keep their hands at home a lot with the small or the light offense. Then once he gets settled at home, he brings a bomb. Lomachenko, that Hansfrey, is. Hansfrey, don't hold. Hansfrey, stop, stop, stop. Let him go. Let him go. More punch combination for Lomachenko after Walters had the now familiar experience of missing the right hand. Don't do it too hard. You don't have to try too hard. Everything's good. Keep peppering him. You see, he's waiting for you. Front, front straight, left, back straight. He's looking for, he's aiming for a counter. Several voices now in Nicholas Walter's corner. Usually we'll see not how that sign. works out for him. Usually it's not a good idea. Yeah, that, and also usually a sign that a lot of people in the corner feel they need to give you advice because you're not doing well. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> okay, Jim. I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Vasily Lomachenko. You, you know, Jim, he's boxing beautifully, I got to tell you. And in round three, he started throwing combinations. In rounds one and two, it was, you know, it was the right jab and the straight left. In round three, he started throwing really nice combinations. I got to tell you something, though. Nicholas Walter should go out there and punch. Now, now watch. Every time Lomachenko throws that right jab, he covers up. If I were Nicholas Walters, I would be punching like a madman, throwing shots, jumping right on Lomachenko. Lomachenko, but he's not. He's covering up, and that's the reason why Lomachenko's winning the fight. Landing more punches with that right jab. Walter's covering up too much. Three to nothing, Lomachenko. A couple things about that. Harold brings up some interesting points. One, Lomachenko establishes superior position. You see the right foot outside of Walter's left foot. So Walter's, especially when he throws the right no, no, hand, no, no, has no, to no. cross over his entire Don't body. Do Don't do that miss the target or else hit it very lightly while Lomachenko's in a much better position to counter. That's the first thing. The second thing is I do agree that Walters should punch more because his best chance is to catch Lomachenko in an exchange. Maybe not win most of the exchanges but land something big in an exchange. But Walters is not exactly a high volume seek and destroy guy. He's a boxer puncher. He just went at it with a good hook and Lomachenko countered the hook with two big punches, so that also would make him, make him slow down and not be so aggressive. I think Lomachenko's offense has neutralized or made uh, lack of for Nicholas Walters to be very offensive in this fight. He yeah, I think uh, Lomachenko's footwork has something to do with that, too. Yeah. Fighters don't like to miss punches, so Harold Letterman may say, well, <laughs> Walters should throw more. But if Walters throws more and misses the punches, he's not going to want to keep doing it. Especially when you have a guy there who will discipline you for your misses. And that's what he's doing. <laughs> Good body shot by Lomachenko. It's just the quickness and decisiveness of Lomachenko. The way he seems to know exactly what he wants to do from moment to moment. He's got the other fighter on the defensive, even when he's not trying to land big. And, and the, vari the variation of oh, speed oh, and, oh, and oh, power on his punches. Tap, tap, lulls the opponent to sleep, <laughs> and then something hard. Can put Good him hook, more, Good hook by the X-Man. Stop, 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 stop. Come on, both of you, keep it clean. Here we go.
Everything Lomachenko does is predicated on position in the ring. He so easily establishes position with his footwork. Watch it back to there. There we go. Gets inside of Nicholas Walters' long arms. Lands punches on the inside. Makes Walters miss over the top. First the stomach and the head. Understand? Body head. The front is working. Hit him in the stomach and the head. Body head. Copy box numbers through the first five rounds. Find Lomachenko landing 55 out of 234. Walters 26 out of 153. So Lomachenko with a 35 to 15 edge and landed punches in the last couple of rounds is piling up CompuBox numbers early against Nicholas Walters. At the beginning of the fight between rounds, Walters was listening to his Panamanian trainer, Celso Chavez. For the last couple of rounds, increasingly he's been looking at his father, Job Walters, and listening to what he has to say. But if you're searching for the right voice in the corner, it means you haven't found things working the way you wanted them to inside the ring. You know, Lomachenko is doing to Walters what he did to Gary Russell Jr. Gary Russell Jr. is a special talent. And Lomachenko just took him to school, virtually shut him out. And, and Nicholas Walters is a top flight fighter in the lower weight classes. The draw was bogus. He's undefeated, really. Knocked out Donaire. Um, had established himself as a fighter that fight fans want to see and think very highly of on the kind of outskirts if you know if not actually in the top 10 pound for pound and Lomachenko as he did to Gary Russell Jr. is just turning it into a boxing lesson it's not quite to the point where you would say that Lomachenko is toying with him but he's able to do what he wants to do well he's almost toying with him he move, moves around him like that to a point to where Nicholas Walters can do no good or uh, no harm to him at all so he's doing pretty much whatever he wants to do at will. And that is somewhat toying with the guy until you catch him with a clean shot. <laughs> Nicholas Walters is trying to put the punches on Lomachenko, and Lomachenko is not showing him a steel target or an open target. Therefore, he is less likely to throw punches because he doesn't see anything. And, and for a good defensive stop, boxer, stop, stop. Lomachenko takes chances. You know, Walter's only shot, it looks like, is to catch him with something big. And it would, it would seem as though Lomachenko's giving him some opportunity by the pace that he's working at, the way he's inside of Walter's punching range. But his defense is so sharp. He has such mastery over distance that I don't see a lot of opportunity for Walter. You heard the thudding body shot by Lomachenko there as he pounded the left into Walter's ribcage. Stop, I got you. Yeah. Walters looking for an opening instead of just punching until he finds an opening. With Lomachenko, he punches until he finds an opening. Lomachenko dropping his hands. And how many fighters would drop their hands in front of Nicholas Walters? In front of the axe man. It's amazing to watch what this man can do. Immediately following tonight's live boxing, stick around for real sports among the stories. A look at why the youngest football players in this country are often the least protected from catastrophic injury and death. December 14, the fight game returns. Join me, Max Kellerman, Bernard Hopkins, and Melissa Stark for one-of-a-kind reporting and analysis of the biggest issues in boxing. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Not a happy corner right now as Nicholas Walters searches for answers and tries to figure out how he can solve the puzzle of Vasily Lomachenko. You know, Max, because he's a southpaw and because he's demonstrably a great defender, I've recently heard people comparing Lomachenko to Pernell Whitaker. And Sweet Pea was one of the greatest fighters we ever covered. But Whitaker wasn't nearly as busy an offensive fighter as Vasily Lomachenko. He was a more careful defensive fighter and a... Um and not nearly as uh, dynamic an offensive fighter, but Purnell's defense is the reason that in his prime, he, no one really could touch him. The easiest thing to prediction to make was Purnell win 12. Didn't matter who he was fighting. No, no. Occasionally he was ripped off by the judges. No, no. Keep your head up. You both, you can't push your head down. Let's go. Boy, it looks to me as though, uh, willing to push it a little bit more and therefore maybe be more vulnerable, but be more exciting offensively. I'm wondering, based on what I've seen in the last couple of rounds, Roy, if Nicholas Walters is starting to think he's got a better chance of landing a big left hook than of landing a straight right hand. Yeah, I think he does because uh, Lomachenko is taking the right hand away completely by stepping around to Nicholas's left. So Nicholas is thinking now the right hand can't get there, so I should try to land the left as he's stepping to my left side. Maybe I can run him into it. But that's what's dangerous is because when he steps around there, he runs you into stuff before you get a chance to try to run him into something. So it's a very tough task for Nicholas Walters right now. Good body. Left talk to the body. That's a good, a good choice and a weapon that could help him down the stretch. And that sets up a chance to land the right hand. Lomachenko in this round has started to land some combinations upstairs um, against a responsible defensive fighter as though he's hitting the floor to ceiling bag, Roy. <laughs> That's him. That's how he does it. That's why they call him high tech, Max. He makes guys like that. I told you that shot was going to come soon because he's over on, on that left side, and Nicholas is not really prepared, thinking that he's too far away. And just then, he cashed in on it. Good body shot by Nicholas. Yeah, he's landed some big body shots this he's round. He's making Walter. some really good choices, is Nicholas Walters in this round, landing his left hook to the body several times. It's a smart choice on his part, but he's landing one punch at a time. And that, Whereas that, Lomachenko is landing combination. And that one punch at a time is never going to work on Lomachenko because he's usually way too slick for that. Nope. Yeah. Lomachenko almost landed an uppercut, and now chops away with a combination. Part of a slick boxer, and Lomachenko is among other things a slick boxer, creating excitement with fans um, is the crowd reaction. Fighting in front of a small audience here, there's not the same kind of energy that kind of emphasizes the amazing things Lomachenko is doing, and consequently, this fight so far is less than exciting because it's so one-sided. If this was a huge kind of pay-per-view extravaganza, what Lomachenko is doing would be highlighted by the fact that he's doing it against this quality fighter. Okay, everything's good. Keep, keep working more. Hit him and move. Stick and move. Hit him. His, his, his attack's getting weaker. Keep going with the right. Relax. Well, the CompuBox graphic showed you that Vasily Lomachenko has landed more punches than Nicholas Walters in each one of the first six rounds of the fight. So we're halfway through. The scheduled 12 rounds. Harold, how do you have it through six? I got to agree with the copy box, guys. Six to nothing. 60 to 54, Vasily Lomachenko. Jim, what a beautiful boxing job. I mean, he is really special. You know, the movement, the hand speed, uh, the right jabs, the right hooks, the straight left hands. He's boxing beautifully. I, I tell you, if there were more old guys like me around, you'd compare him to Willie Pep because he's that kind of a boxer. 
Absolutely beautiful boxing job for six rounds. Six to nothing, Vasily Lomachenko. Was Pep as aggressive and buried an oh, offensive oh, fighter oh, as he oh, is? Oh, no question, Jim. Willie Pep was special. Willie Pep was quick. The only difference was was that Willie Pep was right-handed. Well, there's more. Quick. Willie Pep couldn't crack, and Lomachenko well, can punch. He wasn't a big puncher, but a beautiful boxer. Yes, he does have a lot of Pep in him. Uh, but a better puncher. He has a lot of Purnell in him, but maybe more of a combination puncher. Even as Purnell dominated, a lot of times it was ones and one twos. Yeah, he's just busier than Purnell. What I need is we have a interpreter in Lomachenko's corner to hear what he's saying, but I need me a damn interpreter for Nicholas Walters' corner because I can't understand nothing that they're telling him. Well, and our our great Spanish interpreter Jerry Olaya has the weekend off for very valid reasons so we're guessing good body shot partially blocked by Walters and I think you can tell by the number of people who are trying to talk at the same time in Walters corner that there's a mixed message oh this shot Lomachenko finding the target more and more stop 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 here we go here we go turn around one minute to go in the seventh now he's getting comfortable, Lomachenko is. He's starting to figure Walters out. He's not afraid of the power no more because he knows how it feels. And now he's pressing his attack, trying to get him out of there. I wonder if this level of fearlessness is a good idea against a guy who can punch like Walters. Walters badly off balance good there. Hook by Gets in a good left hook. Still missing with the right hand. And he's taking his best weapon away from him. Kind of the way we saw Nonito, uh, uh, Regan Dow take Nonito's left hook away. Yes. He's taking uh, Nicholas Walters' straight right hand away. Like that right there. Oh, my God. I mean, he's toying with oh, Nicholas this Walters. This is amazing. What, what's going to be really funny is the next time Walters is in with a top fighter and scores a knockout. Right. And we'll remember how good he really is. Because this is indeed becoming toyage. I told you that three rounds ago. Yeah, you did. <laughs> you were right. Lomachenko waving at Walters with his glove as he walks back to his corner. Don't let him return a punch. We talked about this. Keep attacking him. Continue it. He's on his back foot. Keep going. They're stopping the fight. That's astonishing. Nicholas Walters and his corner apparently making a decision that there just wasn't any way. It wasn't. There wasn't, but that is disappointing end to a fight. A fighter of Walter's caliber, even if he's being toyed with, unless there's a physical injury, given his punching power, you would think that a champion, a, a one-time champion, would want to try everything he could to win the fight. But I think sitting here, it was pretty obvious the athletic competition was over, and it was already decided Lomachenko was superior. The tradition in American North American boxing is uh, a, a champion would not stop fighting at that moment. Are you shocked, Roy? I'm no, shocked. No, I'm not because it's similar to Roberto Duran in the No Miles situation. When you're in the ring with a guy, you realize he's not going to give you nothing that you want that night. It's very difficult to stay there, and you know you're totally at his mercy. He's not going to play your game. You have no chance of winning. The only thing you have a chance of doing is being knocked out embarrassingly. Embarrassingly. So for me, I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Well, apparently Walters wanted to bring an end to the embarrassment. We now have a chance to listen to the conversation that took place between Walters and referee Tony Weeks. Let's hear it. The trainer, Celso Chavez, even said, no mas. Yeah, I you told know, you. Just as you said, 
relative to Roberto Duran against Ray Leonard. The same phrase that we heard in New Orleans back in the 1980s. We hear it again here as Nicholas Walters trainer says to Tony Weeks no mas and no mas it is. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the TKO. Ladies and gentlemen the official time comes at the end of round seven as the challenger informs referee Tony Weeks he is unable to continue the winner by TKO victory and still WBO super featherweight champion of the world Vasil High Tech Lomachenko Well, in a moment, we'll look at CompuBox numbers in a fight in which the margin of competition grew a little bit in every round. It looked close enough in the first round, although we could see that Walters was going to have trouble landing his right hand. But at the end of the day, Olemachenko lands 114 to 49, more than doubling Walters. Lands or, th or throws 184 more punches than Walters and lands at a higher connect percentage. The power punch numbers will be even more one-sided. Lomachenko more than doubling Walters in power punches, landing at a 39% percentage. Only 28% for Walters, who really couldn't find anything with his...